All right, you guys, here we are. Outreach number seven. We made it. Uh, just got a text from Shano. He says, ready when you are, let's fire. So no greater start to an episode than that. Uh, Want to mention that the intro music is from Taj Mahal. And the reason that we took a step back from the Paul Simon is because today we're venturing into DVD land. Um, very cool that Shane Dorian would break the scale. And I know that Blueprint is available on VHS, but today we have the pleasure of watching it on DVD. And before we start up, I just want to say thank you again to everybody who's tuning in. Uh, this has been insane. This has been really incredible to be a part of something that's just a grassroots kind of conversation about surfing and classic movies and it opens up different kinds of conversations yesterday with Nathan Fletcher rocked which leads me to I'm learned how to save the conversations and I've uploaded them to the vibe up YouTube channel which you currently are watching if you just click through and you either hit subscribe or you throw a thumbs up or something I think that that means a lot for just the awareness of it and it's cool to save them at the beginning I thought oh these it would be so rad just to keep it live like a radio show but there's so much gold to be shared with generations that'll come next. I looked up to these guys as a young kid and I hope that the young kids coming up now can have these conversations to kind of uh, check back on. A lot of history being shared. So today uh, we are celebrating Blueprint in the life of Shane Dorian and that's directed by Chad Campbell and that's one of the many Billabong films. Uh, but actually this is a copy from Nate Yeomans and this Nate Yeomans was the uh, I watched this movie for the first time with Nate, and uh, I was just blown away. I couldn't even believe the surfing that Shano does. Uh, he's basically the 2 to 20 club. And uh, also, fun fact, I didn't have a DVD player, so this morning I went down to Oceanside Pawn Shop. Thank you, Grant Ellis, for the tip on that. The guy was super stoked on what we're doing, so he lent me the DVD player for the entirety of COVID-19. That rocks. So, okay. As far as Shane Dorian goes, I don't really need to introduce him. Um, I actually didn't really realize that he's in Sons of Fun and Sick Joy. I had to rewatch those and, and really realize that his lineage within Billabong has been for quite a while. He's uh, spanned through many different generations and genres of the movies and he's still with them today. So I think it's pretty rad. And I want to say before I even call him a huge thank you to Shano because anybody who takes the time out to talk surf with another surfer is just rad. So let's, let's fire him up on a call. He said he was going to be at the beach um, with Jackson, who's surfing right now. So that'll be, that'll be really cool to see what he's doing during these times. All right, let me look him up. Here we go. He said the service might not be great, so we'll see. Standing by. Bingo! Yeah, dude. Dude, what? Look at we have the same tripod. I saw you have a Benro. Yeah, we do. Heck yeah. How's the sound? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, actually, you're coming in loud and clear. I love it. Are you at the beach? Yeah, I am. Dude, how's the surf? What's the surf report today? Surf report is about shoulder high. The tide's kind of too low, but it's still kind of fun, and there's one guy out. Is that Jackson? Jackson's paddling out. There's there's one other dude out there. Dude, yes. This rocks. Hey, Shano, I'm going to get you all dialed up on my tripod. It's super janky, and then we can just kind of, we can wrap out, because I was going handheld there. I want to make sure. Right. Cool. I'm going to dial you up, sir. Shane, thanks for taking the time on this, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, too easy. I, uh... I'm super excited, actually. I was, I have a ton of questions for you, and uh, I don't know. I just started rewatching all those old videos, and uh, I was watching Sons of Fun last night. I was tripping on that movie. How good is that? Yeah, it's pretty funny, huh? It's so classic. We're like little kids. Is that one of your first Billabong movies that you did? Yeah, that was the first one that we did. And then was Sick Joy after it? Sick Joy was right after, yeah. It was right after Sons of Fun. Dude, you know what's so crazy is Jack McCoy in that movie is, yes, are you going, if you can go horizontal, Shano, it, it just blows up this, the image for us. Is that possible? Horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Okay. Is that good? 
You're still small. Hold on, let's see. Can you go? Yet, yeah, wait. Boom. Okay, cool. That's better. That's better. Yeah, but you're. We're talking like, sort of on an angle right now. Is that better? Yeah, that looks good. Oh, nice day over there. Yeah, it's a little overcast. Kind of ugly, but it's all good. So, have you been filming a ton now? Yeah, I mean, you know, because I'll surf for like an hour, and then my my kid and all his friends will be surfing for like another two or three hours. So then, when I'm done surfing, I'll usually start filming. That's so rad. Well, what's the yeah. what's the camera that you're using? Um, it gives me something to do when I'm at the beach waiting for my kid to come in. <laughs> <laughs> well, and too, um, it's cool to have clips. Like, I'm sure you enjoy seeing Jackson and yeah. what he's been doing. Um, but yeah, I have a, just a basic dad cam. It's a Sony, Sony RX10, but it's it's good for sure. Rad. Dude, that's epic. Yeah, I was stoked to kind of catch up on Jackson as well. The last time I saw you was at the surf ranch, and that was when oh, yeah. he was there. And I don't know, it's crazy, man. He's surfing so good, but the, when I met him, that was my first time meeting him. He's such a nice kid. Yeah, he's a funny little bugger. He's stoked on surfing. It's hard where we live, man. There's there's not really many kids that surf good, so it's most of the time he's surfing by himself, um, which makes it hard, you know? So there's not like a rat pack of groms. How about, because, I mean, on Big Island, for you growing up, I was watching Blueprint. Conan was a little younger, but who was around, like, when you were yeah, Jackson's nobody. age? Nobody. Yeah. I surf by myself most of the time, same as him. Wow, there was there was a moment there that there was a pretty good sized pack like Casey Brown, Tonino, Tori Meister. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There was like four kids, all that same kind of age group that were all really good for a little while, but now it's really quieted down. It's really Jackson and this kid Diesel from the other side of the island. Right. Yeah, but, but and then and then in the older sixteen uh, year old, we got Brody Brody Sale. He's super good too. Do you kind of keep an eye and kind of help out all the kids? I mean, you have I the, tried to, yeah. You have the longest running kids event, right? Yeah, this year was our twenty fifth. Holy cow, dude! What? Yeah, twenty five years. Right? That's insane. I know it's totally nuts. That is wild. So, how old were you when you first did the first one? I was twenty two. Oh my gosh, man, that's rad. That was a huge, actually, for us, a huge inspiration to start a kids event because you and the Irons brothers both doing that was like. It's just such a fun thing to be surrounding yourself with, which we never knew, and we tried to start one up, but 25 years is like, that's dynasty, dude. I know, it's pretty wild. I, you know, when I, when I started, I thought, I had no idea what I was getting myself into, and there wasn't like a, there wasn't like any precedent for like a kid's event, the kind I wanted to run, and so there wasn't like, oh, you know, so-and-so, like, Taj does it in West Oz, so I'm going to do it where I live. There wasn't really anything happening at the time, so... I kind of just winged it, um, and so yeah, it's just, it's, it's kind of stood the test of time. And like you guys know, it's such a fun thing for your little local community, you know. A hundred percent. I mean, it keeps you connected, and to the kids coming up, and it's just fun to see them around their first surf events. That's the yeah. biggest one for us. It's it's such yeah. an awkward moment that only you really know if you've done a surf event where you're nervous but excited but don't know how to do it. It's all time. It's all time, dude. It's insane. Yeah, no doubt. So I was curious, like, what's the like, what's the landscape of a surf dad right now with a with a Grom who just loves surfing? Oh, pretty funny, you know. And there's a lot of surf dads out there that that will, will attest to this, but it is weird, man. I, I, it's funny because my my kid, my son Jackson, he's 13 now, and and when I when he was basically born, I started taking him surfing, like. We would, I used to spend a lot of time on Tavarua back then, and, and when he was like six months old, I would take him out on like a soft top at Kitty Land and ride little tiny waves with him, and as he was, you know, one and two and three years old and four years old, he would come with me and surf all the time, but he was always like on my longboard, or, you know, I was just trying to keep him safe and get him in the water, and then, and then when he got like maybe six or seven, he started skateboarding, and when he found skateboarding, he just didn't want to surf anymore. He just got really, like, really into skateboarding, and then he really didn't want to go to the beach anymore. Like, his skin was pale, and he was just over it. He was like, surfing's your thing, Dad. No and, um, way. So, yeah, so for, like, a three-year period, he basically didn't surf. And I, I didn't think he was going to want to – I didn't know if he was ever going to want to surf again. And 
And then, so it wasn't until about nine years old, and then he finally started coming back around and surfing with me, and then he got really into it a few years back, and um, and now it's a trip. He wants to surf every day, and he loves it, and he's got a bunch of friends from surfing, and it's weird, though, because um, as he's getting better now, he's, like, really obsessed with it, you know? Who's the guys he's looking up to? What movies is he watching, I guess? He just watches a lot of edits. He loves, like, Eli Hanneman and... Um, Crosby, Colapinto, and then a lot of the like younger Aussie guys and stuff like that. Like a lot of like the fifteen to sixteen year old range. I was he curious, gets fired up by those guys. He he must have an inside track with the entire Billabong team, like Italo, when you were kind of helping him with a world title there at Pipe. That must have been incredible for Jackson to be on that in the dugout for that. Yeah, for sure. Pretty trippy, he was, right? He was he, he was kind of in the dugout. He was he was more like just fanning out super hard. Um, <laughs> He had the T-shirts on every day, and he was on the beach with the flags and with all the other kids. So he, he wasn't really so much in the dugout. He was more just, like, psyched to be a part of it and stoked to see how it all goes down and how a world title's won. And, um, you know, he loves Italo, and Italo's so, kid, so cool to all the grommets. So it was super cool just to see Jackson and all his buddies get really fired up to see Italo win. What was that like, dude? Like the inside scoop on Italo's headspace. Like he literally was like rock solid at the pipe masters going against ice cold Medina. Was he, <laughs> how was that? Yeah, it was tricky, man. It was tricky from a st- uh, strategic standpoint. Um, you know, like basically no way, assuming that, that Gabriel was going to be in the final. And that's what I told him. I was like, dude, you can't even think about him because he, he's basically in the final. So, first of all, you got to start making some rounds. And we just talked about it from, like, a, a, a strategy standpoint. I was like, dude, you got to get to Hawaii as soon as you possibly can and start serving pipeline. Yeah. And when, once you get to Hawaii, I want you to only serve pipeline only. And I want you to not catch any scraps. And so I started off with, like, trying to change his mindset from – because just a couple of years ago, he was a Grom that was not getting a single wave at Pipe. But I was like, dude, you're 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 a world title contender. You're in the lead right now. And all the local boys at Pipe, they all have to catch the scratch. That's all they're going to give you. Yeah. So it was it was more of like a like changing his mindset to expect to catch the sets. And it took a couple of weeks, but you know he earned the respect of all the local boys, and they were super fired up on him. And um, yeah, it went really well. He he just started building his confidence and. And to see him working through the rounds and starting to really believe that he could win was really cool. What about it was, it was fun? It was fun to work with him for sure. You guys must have talked though, because if you're saying Medina is going to be in the finals, the goal is to be in the finals. Like, how? What was it like? Hey, world title, sudden death. Like, what's the scoop? Like, just falls well, out. Let's do this. He had, he had never he had never even made the quarters of pipe, so we had a lot of work to do, and that's why I told him I was like, dude, you can't show because his first. His first plan was he was going to show up just like four or five days before the pipe event. And and because he doesn't catch waves at pipe. That's what he said. And I was like, no, dude. That, <laughs> that's not how this is going to work. It's not ending like this. I was like, if you want me to help you, because he reached out for help. And I, I said, if you want me to help you, you have to be 100% committed to this plan. And, and my plan is to get you here three weeks early, three and a half weeks early and surf nothing but pipeline every single day. And you're going to slowly but surely build the belief that, that, that you have what it takes to win. Because if you show up at Pipeline from Brazil four days in advance, you don't believe in your heart that you have what it takes to win and you don't feel like you really deserve it. So my thing was like the he, his surfing is there. He just has to believe, you know. And so the only way to build that belief is to put in a hard time. So I was like, you need to be out there at, like before everyone every single morning and surf as many times as you can during the day and be the last guy out. That's some so, golden and, knowledge. Yeah, which sucks. I mean, it's not fun. Serving pipeline it, ordinarily is not usually that fun. You know, it's a nightmare. It's like a hundred guys out that don't want to give you a wave. Everybody's testing you. Everybody wants to be the guy who weaseled freaking Italo. Yeah. And, but after about a week of really, really not taking no for an answer, he started getting tons of really good waves. And, and it wasn't long after that to where he was like, dude, I think I'm really feeling comfortable out there. And then to see his mindset change, that's when I knew he had a chance. And I was like, dude, you really do truly have a chance. So all you got to do is start building momentum and start start taking each heat as it comes and start winning. How many years were you on tour there, Shane? 
I was on tour for 11 years in the CT. That's it. I was really curious because in Blueprint you have heat footage, which I I absolutely love is when the contest footage, that was like big things like in montage, all the contest footage and Blueprint, obviously. But a lot of the movies at the time were showing events. But with you, like I feel like the contribution to surf has been in so many different realms, whether it's the big wave uh, or the contest or just video parts. Um, how was it when you stepped away from the events? Yeah, it was, it was a trip, you know, because that's kind of all I knew at the time was I was had been competing and trying to trying to um, compete at the top level for a long time. And so I just the last few years I was competing, I, I was getting really burnt out. And um, I just really wanted to step away from that and focus on I really was truly passionate about surfing big waves at the time. And I was just like, man, this is not I'm not feeling passionate about winning heats anymore. And so I want to shift gears and I really want to try and surf really giant waves and um so yeah i just stepped away and at the time i was super burnt out so there was no i wasn't like i didn't have fomo at all so i was able to make that transition pretty easily that's what's true because because on a much smaller scale i just stepped back from contests but it's there's no like actual guidebook to how to do that or the right time to do that because it's kind of like gambling with competing you're like yeah. i'm just getting better i'm just understanding these waves more but it's cool, like, I mean, like, you've always done every single thing, like, even when you were on tour, you were in the eddies, right? Yeah, I was so in the eddy, yeah. Almost just, like, restructuring what your priority list was, and just going, hey, like, now it's game on. Yeah. Sorry, it's starting to rain, so I just had to, like, pack up my stuff real quick. Dude, I'm just gonna go under a little shelter thing over here, but can you still hear me, Tanner? We're on the run. Sick. Was that a carver board I saw right there? Yeah, dude, that's so. Patrick loves those things. Oh, it's epic. The place where the place we're surfing is closed for quarantine, so how, we had to like sneak through the gate and ride down here. How is it in Hawaii with the whole COVID? It's a trip. Um, it's weird, you know. Like our our uh, our mayor and our governor, pretty darn relaxed about everything and didn't really see it coming. I think they feel. I, I feel like they they kind of felt like Hawaii was, is so insulated, like, geographically uh -huh. that they didn't take it seriously at all. And, and Hawaii is, you know, like 90% of the industry in Hawaii is all tourism. And so um, to shut shut down tourism, essentially, basically, like, 90% of people are out of work here. And yeah. so it was, a, it was a huge call to shut it down, and they probably waited way too long. Um. But yeah, I mean, it's 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 kind of business as usual, though, in Hawaii for, for the most part. But it's pretty gnarly, specifically on Big Island, because you guys just had that volcano erupt a couple months ago, or a couple years ago? Yeah, 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 about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Um, that was heavy. That was super heavy. It was, um, yeah, that was gnarly. It was like, dude, for like three months, the, the air was like Shanghai. Like, seriously, we're like, I left for the whole time. I was gone. It was in the summertime, so we split, and I was um, I was traveling at the time, but but like around my house, it was gnarly for like three months. It was like it was like China, like the the, the air quality was nasty. Well, what's that mean? Is it like gray, like you can't see anything, or is it just dense? Yeah, there was like volcanic ash in the air for like four months. Fuck. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, oh, are we under? We're we're covered. We are. Dude, that's so fun. That's like Hawaii right there. Like a quick little sprinkle and then the sun's out. You're stuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty mellow. Hey, uh, okay, so I'm sorry. We totally got sidetracked on so many rad things, but um, you, to bring you back to today's blueprint, um, yep. was that the only film that you worked with Chad Campbell on? No. So Chad, <clears throat> Chad is a really good friend of mine, and he's, um, he's from here, like, um, he's from Kona where I live on the big island and we just um, have been friends for a long time and he I don't know how to explain Chad but he just kind of started like kind of tinkering with filming and editing and um, he decided to make this film called the fifth symphony document oh okay and, uh, and so he made this this film called the fifth symphony document and it just started as like a little pet project for him um, him and another friend of mine, Andy Carlson, 
and they ended up filming that thing for like I don't know six months or so, and then they ended up winning um, the Surfer Magazine Film of the Year. Yeah. Uh, for that film, and and then then he was like, man, this is really fun. I like making movies. Like, let's do one together. And I was in that film. I filmed around home for that. And so he was like, oh, we'll just we'll, it'll just be super fun. Like, we'll just we'll just hang out and go surfing and do and do some trips. I'll come on a tour with you and we'll just do our thing and like make a film. And we didn't, we didn't really have that much of a plan for that, that movie. We just kind of winged it. Well, there is some footage, especially towards the end, like a couple clips that were in loose change as well when you're on that orange board. Uh, so like, yep. I don't know if that was like a big montage cause that's the final section. So, but it just looked like you guys were having a really good time when you were making it. Yeah. I mean, you kidding me? Yeah, it was really, it's really fun because Chad Chad was like a really good friend of mine, so he was like like working with a with you know like a best friend, and so it was like we were traveling and surfing and filming, but it wasn't like work at all. You know, we were just like stacking clips and just putting footage together. Dude, the know? soundtrack on that thing is wild too. Like it's almost like this jazz pseudo kick up. This yeah. Jack Kerouac spoken. Just let them know. Hey, sorry, legend. That was wild. Got the stream back up. So that's cool. But this is all an experiment. And uh, Shane was tripping why they would do that. We, we weren't really even talking about anything weird. And uh, that was a really fun conversation. So we'll see what he says. And uh, hey, Shelves, can you help me get Charlie out of here? So we're back on. The people will get what they want. A little bit of excitement. The live experiment continues. Uh, but, I mean, if we don't get Shano back, that's all good. He had a ton of knowledge. I don't specifically know where we clipped out, um, but he was talking a lot of really cool stuff about Chad Campbell, them being friends, the music coming from Chad, which I think you guys will see is pretty unique. It's like a jazzy house mix sort of kerouac -y sort of thing, and um, man, this is cool. So standing by, if Shano wants to flare up again, we'll flare up, we'll pause the movie and we'll just get all stoked. But if not, for now, let's just connect on the fact that that was really rad. Shane Dorian was at the beach and he took our call and we got to learn a little bit. I mean, the guy said we could call again if we wanted. So maybe the Sons of Fun dream will happen. Maybe it's nine lives, who knows, I don't know. But uh, thank you, Shano. Sorry about that, boss. That was really weird on YouTube's part. I, don't, I didn't love that. Didn't love seeing that. But uh, we're going to play the movie. So tuning in, standing by. Thank you. I'll zoom you guys right in. All right, you guys, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. How legendary is Shane Dorian? He's this legendary. He said he's still got more meat on the bone, kids. Okay, so we're calling him. We're just going to FaceTime him. If we get shut down part two, we get shut down part two. Let's see what's going on. Dude, what about that light sprinkle? I guess it's coming down pretty hard now. <laughs> no, it's not too bad. Oh my god. Hey, can you tell right now, but it's it's you and then blue plints playing in the background and then it's me. So we're kind of like sandwiching the profile film right here. Okay, cool. Super sorry about that, man. That was weird. No worries. But uh, also kind of cool because I don't know what I'm doing and it's kind of like you got to just save a little room to just have weirdness in episodes. Yeah, so are you streaming it live on YouTube or Instagram or what? Yes, so what I did, I was, here, I'll turn it around here. Um, so what I did actually was I just ended up uh, wanting to do this as a fun project during the like COVID time. Didn't know yeah. anything about it. So I made a website and I guess it streams from YouTube and then um, it goes, yeah, it's just right there by YouTube. So they control all the copyrights. So. It's been getting clipped after all the episodes. We had a sick one with Mick Fanning. We watched Fanning the Fire, and yep. then that disappeared like an hour later. But I've never, huh. I've never had it go in the middle of a stream. Huh? What a trip! A fleeting thought. 
Yeah, what? A fleeting thought. <laughs> this thing's just yeah. a, a work in progress. But yeah, right. I'm I'm really stoked because I actually wanted to hit you up on the artwork you were doing in Blueprint. But do you still do a lot of art? No. Why, dude? That is incredible. Um, I don't know. I just it's I was super passionate about it when I was a kid and then I just kind of grew out of it and kind of like lack motivation on on doing art. That, that was funny because that was something like from my past that Chad was like, oh, we should try to utilize that in the film to help tell the story, you know? So I thought that was a really good idea. That's why I was kind of like reluctantly into it. Re Dude, it's mind blowing though. Like the ball, I have never, like, that's hard to make really cool stuff with just a pen and it looks rad. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to do. And I, th I think like looking back on it, it was the right call. It was fun. It was, a, it was an easy way to, to help tell the story with, not having me talk too much. <laughs> yeah, how awkward is it when you gotta like talk through a whole film? Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, and two, we never caught up on Pickled, the whole experience of that movie as well. Yeah, that one was kind of a blur to me. That was a, it was a strange time. It was a really kind of a, to be honest, I, I felt like it was a little bit of a wacky idea. The whole like, I don't know if you really like paid attention to that film, but like, it was like, these guys were walking around with a pickle jar and somehow they weaved it into a storyline in a surf video. Oh yeah. Dude, uh, Toons gets lost out to sea on a raft and then he's all he's got is the pickles. Yeah. And um, isn't like Benji like the main guy or something like yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, he is. So good, dude. I mean it's that, that was that was super fun and we went to uh where to go? Um I think we went to St. Bart's for that film, which was super fun. Um and we had a really good time. We got fun waves but it was just really neat to see that part of the world you know yeah i will say though it had a completely different feel to a yeah. movie and it's a cult classic when i put up all the films today on the instagram a lot of people hit for pickled so it's kind of interesting yeah yeah that, that that was a movie that that um this guy mouse made i don't know if you know his story but i forget the name of this skate film but it was like this cult classic skate film that he helped produce and so, like, kind of on the back of that, he got this job with Billabong to make the surf film. So that's Jamie Mossberg as Mouse? Jamie Mossberg, yep. Okay, Mouse. cool. And, he, he, and so he, that was his concept, the whole pickle jar thing. But, um, yeah, I, it was a lot of fun to be a part of. And that was just a different time, a different era when you actually got on a plane and went and did trips for surf films, you know? Well, I mean, dude, we're in COVID, so nobody's getting on planes right now. But, yeah, exactly. I, I do agree. Like, it's got to be trippy now for... I mean, Jackson and the generation coming up next, like, I wonder, you have all the insight of the momentum generation, you guys traveling together and working together to create things, and now it seems like it's a bit more individualistic. I don't know if you feel the same way. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, it's, 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 it is for sure. I think you, um, that's exactly right. I really don't know how to explain it, but I, I feel like the social media aspect has really made people have to, like, you know, sort of be forced to build their individual profile and all that. So like everybody's like building their own channels, which is, which makes it really difficult to like everybody like band together and hang out together. I mean, you can still totally do it. I just think it's not as user friendly as it once was. Yeah. It's trippy. It, it, there's a, I feel like there's a good side and a bad side because you can, pr you basically can create yourself instead of having to wait for the opportunity, but it doesn't really allow for that community to come in. Yeah, I, well, I mean, you can still do it. You just have to be aware and, like, really try and make it happen. Where, like, back in the day, it was, like, Taylor Steele, that's what he did was film and edit, and he was one of our really good friends. So it just was such a, such, like, a, um, such a no-brainer, and everything kind of, like, came together organically. Yeah. It wasn't like we had to force anything. We weren't trying to make these movies at the start we were just hanging out you know so do you because i mean we have a huge collection of taylor steels i feel like for pat dane and i that was so close to us do you have a favorite section of your of your own in those movies probably um uh probably um i don't know why i'm drawing a blank but uh <laughs> there is a um campaign two Dude, the end section. Yeah. Oh yeah, but what about that how? Was probably, that was probably the reason, and and it, and it was also like my probably my strongest section ever. But.
and I was with, and I was with, um, I, I went to LA, it was the first one, and it was in Malibu, it was, it was kind of a crazy story, but for me, like, a full highlight, because we went to the first one in Malibu, it was, like, this giant rager at this huge, giant, like, mansion in Malibu, someone knew, and there was, like, hundreds of people there, and, and Taylor showed the film, and it was totally done, edited, and, um, I think Andy had the last part. Okay. And then the next, and it was sick. And the next time I watched it was in San Diego at um, what's the what's the film theater called in San Diego? The La Paloma. Movie? Yeah, at, at La Paloma. So we're at La Paloma, and I'm sitting there, and I'm watching the film, and everyone's psyched, and everything's epic. And it comes time for my part, and it's and it's Kelly's. Where it's like a different version or something, and. And, uh, and then after that was Andy's part. And then and then Taylor Steele walked up to me and he's like, what do you think? And I was like, what? We were still watching the film. I just thought they like glitched out and my my part disappeared. So and what was the shakeup about? Was that like, did he false crack you in the first showing of it? No, it was Andy. It was, it was Andy and Kelly told Taylor that I should have the last part. Dude, see, this is, so that even in Blueprint, I wanted to ask you because you're, Andy always, you and Andy, I feel like had such mutual respect for each other. Like Andy always was like, dude, Shane knows the guy. And then you and Kelly are literally s such good friends. Was there ever any like, that's so cool that they both voted you for the final part. Like, was there ever any mediation between the three of you of like, you had to kind of calm some fires down? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, a movie that you definitely should. Oh God, yeah. Watch that? Oh my goodness, that's so yeah, good. That's so good. But that was like the first surf trip that they both did together, and that was supposed to be Andy's film, and he invited Kelly to go on that trip. And then I was in Bali, and Kelly felt super uncomfortable about going on the trip with Andy, and then Andy felt super awkward about being there with Kelly. So they both were like, last second, they were like, "Hey, will you guys, will you please come to hang out?" And I was there like three days late for the trip, but I guess they weren't. They weren't really talking at all before I got there, and they didn't surf one session together before I got there. And then, and then when I got there, because I was really good friends with both of them, I was um, I ended up being like the icebreaker, I guess, between the two. So they they had their shit, you know, but um, they were just hyper competitive. And in the in the time at the time, they couldn't separate the hyper competitive personal trip from the hyper competitive contest. Yeah. So. That's but it was cool because they were able to squash the beef for the, for the large part on that trip, which was really fun to be a part of, you know? But that's also really cool that they both voted you for the campaign two section. That is really like the ended at that Echo gnarly one. I did. And that was like, for me, you know what it's like when you have like your peers, like really like back you up. So yeah. for me to have, um, I remember when we were at, watching in san diego and i ended up having the last part so for me that was like like honestly out of all the things in surfing that i've ever done that's probably one of the most important things to me for sure well i mean after you and donovan were on the motorcycle together like i would have voted you <laughs> last section anyways <laughs> how's this beaver sweatshirt or whatever the beaver vest it doesn't get for me it does not get better than that scene <laughs> Uh, it's all time. Well, it looks like you guys had a really good time. Like I was a, that's a cool point though. I, I mean, I'm looking literally at momentum, loose change, good times, eight. What about eight? That's like so culty and rad. <laughs> it's funny because you guys are like the perfect age to have grown up with all those films. It's classic talking to you because I barely even remember all that stuff, even though they were like a huge part of our lives back then, you know, but eight was really cool. It was the same thing. We're just like, let's go to do a, do a, do a trip in Australia and film. We didn't really even have a have a plan. We just we were all really good friends. So we put the word out like, "Hey, we're gonna do this this trip. We're gonna like rent this big house and in, in uh, Foster, and like we're just gonna like all go do it together and all chip in and and then we just hung out and surf for like eight days." It's crazy though, because you guys, I feel like inspired so many of us. Like I, I know for sure, Pat, Dane, and I, we we were traveling with Dylan Graves, Alejandro Moreta, Alex Gray, like, and you identify your crew as if you were you guys. You know, you're like. Oh, dude, you're the Shane Dorian, or like you're the Kelly, or like it was such an era to grow up and watch these yeah. videos. 
Um, so thank you. <laughs> you're, very, you're very welcome. That was fun, man. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Me. I mean, it, it looked fun. Yeah, it was for sure. Uh, well, Jackson came in from surfing. Want to say hi? Yeah. Sad. Jackson, what are you doing, dude? How was the surf? It was fun. It was like a little bit rainy and cold, but it was fun. Kind of nice to be out there pretty solo. <laughs> yeah. Dude, so are we going back to Waco or what, boys? Let's do this. Yeah, you want to go back to Waco? Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we just need this quarantine to go away and then we'll yeah. go back. Well, it, once we get groups of 10, then you start, like, planning a surf trip with only 10 friends. Exactly, right? <laughs> slowly open it back up, but that'll be on the list. Well, you, sure. you guys, thanks so much, Shano, and thanks for the double call. Yeah. yeah, man, too easy. I really appreciate it. Have a great day, you guys. Yeah, right on, Tanner. Have a good day. See ya. Later. Rocking and rolling. Okay, you guys, that was so fun. So now. Uh, that, well, that rocked, didn't it? That, absolutely, I'm going to let this play in the background a little lower volume. Credits. As we go through our other very fun portion of the day. Three Friends Top 5 Surf Movies of All Time right here, presented by Wade Goodall, Toad Bag. All right, first up. Wait, did we already read Leanne Kearns? I feel like we might have, but let's just do it now. This is incredible. Leanne Kern, huge supporter of the VHS movement. Her top five list is, this is so fun. Loose Change, Fanning the Fire. That's a good movie. We watched that a couple days ago. My Eyes Won't Dry. I remember getting this. I was going to tell her that I'm going to try to track that down. Litmus. Andrew Kidman's movie. That's Psycho. That's, one of the, that's definitely one of the top movies I've ever watched in my life. It's got a lot of interesting info in that movie. Shimmer. And that, again, is the Sonny Miller Roxy film that we're trying to track down. I talked to Leanne. That was available on eBay, so I'm going to buy it. Standing by on that one. Okay, here we go. Who's next? Goni Zubi Zaretta, currently living in Portugal, from Spain. Go Goni, Gonzalo. Okay, brother, reaching out to you to announce your top, he, he gave me 15, so I had to kind of cut it at a certain point, but searching for Tom Curran, Pump, I've had a lot of people asking about Pump, we're still trying to get in touch with Jack McCoy, would be really awesome to have a conversation with him. Fletcher Media Hawaii 95, I should have asked Nathan about that. Kelly Slater, black and white, Pinnacle. Magnaplasm, we got to show that a couple days ago. Raw Irons, we saw that a couple days ago. And Alley Oop. These are that's a very diverse list, which I love seeing. Last one of the day. Who's it gonna be? Matt Myers, the Red Van Chronicles. He is tuning in. And again, Matt Myers, thank you again. He's the reason that we were able to talk to Mick Fanning the other day. So his list goes momentum under the influence. Montage, Snapped 2, Logan Doolian's been tuning in. So we'll catch up with him, see what's going on. I know there's another Snapped 4 coming out. Secure the bag, boys. 3 Degrees, and we saw that. Mason Hout teed us into that one. Now this is getting great. Punk Rock Surfers, that's Santa Cruz Finest. We're hoping for May 4th, if we're still in quarantine, to have an unofficial Barney Day, or May 5th. Uh, alt list here, I love having an alt list. TK4, First Chapter, Campaign 1 and 2, Loose Change, Trilogy, and Graham Nash. If you are out there, State of Emergency made the list, brother. So that kind of brings us to the end of our end of our showing here. Again, thank you for everybody who stayed on. That was a really awkward thing that we got cut by YouTube. Um, Want to say a huge thank you personally 